for clothes that twist and long. At Bold 3 Detergent Plus. I need the remote. Where's the remote? What's on? It's okay to indulge in a good TV series binge from time to time, as long as you do so mindfully. Welcome to the Mindful Binge. It's like a book club, just for TV people. Join Elise Bryson and Lane Kennedy, two sober West Coast besties who have never met in real life, as they recap TV shows and movies they love to binge mindfully. This dynamic duo digs into shows and movies that feature addiction, mental illness, and recovery as a part of the leading storylines. Now, now let's, let's get, get into, into this, this week's, week's episode. episode. Welcome back. It's the Mindful Binge with Elise Bryson and me. My name is Lane Kennedy. We are thrilled that you are here with us to talk about TV shows that we're binging right now. Mindfully. What are we binging? Mindfully. <laughs> Mindfully. <laughs> Mindfully. Um, and just like that. The Sex and, and the City like reboot, which, you know, a lot of discussions leading up to this and even more now that it's started. Yeah, we are behind on this, but it's okay. We're going to begin. We're, we're going to begin. We're going to begin. Because so we're we've, been, begin at- we've been mindful about it. <laughs> right. <laughs> we're going to start with season one, episode one. It's called, Hello, It's Me. Where do we want to start? Well, how about that opening scene when they're at the restaurant oh, God, to have yeah. lunch, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and the first thing I notice is no one's wearing masks and no one's really socially distant. And I'm like, wait, when is this? We know, is this in the future? How far in the future? Those are my immediate questions. And then the next thing I felt was, oh, they're all dressed up again. Does this mean we're going to go back to being super dressed up all, all the time again? That was my next thought. So- <laughs> What about you? That is exactly what I was thinking. I I didn't understand the time zone at all, but then they do mention, Yep, there is a mention of uh, somebody asking if Samantha was dead. Yes. Right. So then it was like, oh, I guess we're done with the pandemic or we're having a break from the pandemic and nobody's wearing masks. So we're in the safe zone. Yes, uh, this magical safe zone that's at some point in the not too far future. So I did notice all the gorgeous outfits and everything was very bright. It's definitely very like colorful. Springtime. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> definitely summer. springtime. It's springtime in New York for sure. It's not fall. It's not winter. It is. We have a fresh start. I love the way Miranda looks. I love, I like all of their outfits, honestly. Hey. Carrie's hair is phenomenal. Oh, just talk about the hair. Yeah. Let's talk about the hair. Let's talk about all of their hair for a minute. Go, you start on this. I love Carrie's hair. Um, I am now going to grow mine out even longer and add extensions and maybe curl it. I don't know. Like I'm obsessed with her hair. Uh, Charlotte's hair is predictable, right? She still looks very quintessential Charlotte. And even though we know all these gals are, you know, a little bit older now, um, we, Charlotte has aged exactly how we thought she would. She looks the same, but then we get to Charlotte. I mean, sorry, Miranda, who has let go of her fiery red locks. Okay. She has completely let it go. <laughs> I mean, completely. <laughs> I'm like, what happened to Miranda? <laughs> I, I she has it, let it all go. It didn't bother me. It was different, but it didn't bother me. Oh, it bothers me. It does? It bothers me because I was a fan of Miranda because she was always a little odd person out. Yeah. She was never, you know, in the, she was always different. Right. But to see how drastic she is in this opening scene, uh, I was like, you really think it was drastic? <sighs> yeah. I didn't like it. Okay. I didn't like it. I didn't like it, but I did like uh, Charlotte. I think Charlotte's, you know, appropriate. Mm-hmm. I think she looks stunning and beautiful. Like she's a well-kept woman and I'm quoting that. Uh, she has, what's her husband, Harry, 
yes, Harry, Harry, right? Like that this is who she is. So it seems pretty perfect. Uh, Carrie spot on nothing changed there. No, she's aged flawlessly. Yes. <laughs> and thank God she finally got an iPhone. Like, thank God. Do you remember how she like in the movies, she like couldn't let go of the flip phone right. and couldn't accept technology, but now right. she's, she's got her iPhone. She's even like, you see her at one point, like somebody walks through the the cafe or the, or the restaurant that they're at having lunch and with a really unique outfit and she's getting it for the gram and talking about Instagram, like, okay, Carrie's kept up with the times. All right. I'm here for it. I do appreciate that. Uh, What about when, uh, uh, was it Mitzi from the past comes in? Do you remember that little cameo with Mitzi from really early on seasons? That happens. And then the other thing that uh, the other person in that scene is, is our new character. <gasps> RTW. Who you love. Oh, I love Who her. I love. That I fashion. Her fashion, her accessory game is coming out of the gate strong. Strong. She is stunning. Gorgeous. And she fits with the brand. She does. She does. 100%. Yep. Yeah. Uh, she's in the storyline. They're a little, I have to say they're a little too perfect sometimes for me. And it kind of bums me out. I'm waiting for them to bring somebody on that is age appropriate like them, but who does not have it together, who is wearing jeans with holes in them and t-shirts like I wear this. Right. Right. right? And like if we had been at lunch together, Yes, I would have been eating fries, but I probably would have spilt some on my chest. Like, right. you know, yes. Like there, where's, where's the real life stuff? There's, it's a little too polished, but it's okay. Cause I'm going on the okay. ride yeah. through the binge. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm okay with it. Uh, let's, let's, what's next. So we see RTW, we go into, um, what is next? Big talk about big. Well, we see, we see, we, uh, we, you know, what's established is that big and Carrie are still together and, um, you know, they're making dinners at home and they're spending time together and they established this habit during the pandemic of listening to a different vinyl album every night. And, you know, we're supposed to believe that they are just living their happy ever after. Right. It's a little too perfect again. Yeah, pretty. Perfect. Yeah, it's a little too polished. Mm-hmm. I, it's, it's a little too. Yeah, it's a little too weird. Like, you know, I'm with my partner twelve years. It's not that shiny and bright, and you know, perfect anymore. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so mm-hmm. there's something to be said. I don't know. We also in this first episode are introduced to Miranda. Enroll, you know, she's enrolled in college courses. Yeah, she's quit her high-powered attorney gig mm-hmm. um, and is going into human rights. So that's a switch. And we're also being introduced to um, her son, Brady, and Charlotte's girls, Rose and Lily. Mm-hmm. Like, so there's, you know, the character pack is getting flushed out with their, yeah. with their like people. It. Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. I like that we're meeting the professor. I like, oh, we're forgetting Miranda stopping at the bar for a drink before okay, yeah, she let's, goes to let's talk her about class. That. Yeah. Let's talk All right, about so that. So we have this moment. It's 1045 or something like it's 1045 in the morning, 1045. And she's asking for a drink before she goes to her class. Mm-hmm. And this, and the fella, the bartender says, uh, he's not having early. it. It's, yeah. We're not open yet lady. And she's like, can't you just bend the rules for me? Yeah. Isn't it, isn't it happy hour somewhere? He, he, he. And he's like, no. And no. she's like, okay, I'll sit and wait. And you know, at first, because I hadn't seen anything else. My initial shock is she's uptight a Miranda yep. and she wants to be perfect. So she's probably showed up to school two hours early because she was worried about getting there on time and she's got time to kill and she just hopped into this bar didn't really think about it as the story continues we get more bits of information but in this first setting i was like meh it happens you know 
people keep different hours. I didn't, it didn't flag me as a huge red flag at that moment, but I noticed it. You bet. I noticed it. I noticed it. It flagged me. (laughs) I am seeing this woman unravel in a midlife crisis. And that was the, like, there it is. Something's going to go sideways with Miranda. Yeah. So I'm excited to see what happens. When she goes on and gets to school, she's a disaster. I'm like, what has happened? Oh yeah. The, the language that she uses, the inappropriateness, the way they paint her ignorance is stunning. Stellar job. <laughs> Except that I, I had a hard time buying off on it because to me, I feel like Miranda is someone that would have stayed with the times and not been so politically incorrect. Again, She's kind of clueless. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you know, like she's all up in her head about her lost stuff. She's always in her previous, right. She's always been so heady about things. She's not a very, uh, future thinking person. So I I think it kind of fits in a little bit. Maybe they went overboard a snippet, Okay. but I think it was, I'll I'll take your snippet. I'll take it. I think it was okay. I love the professor that they brought in. Now, She's fabulous. She's I can fabulous. be down with her. I love the way that she interacts with Miranda about her hair. <laughs> yeah, that that whole I was very uncomfortable. As were all the students that were sitting around. Um, and you know what? Speaking of those students, I also like at the time thought about like what it would be like to go back to school oh. in my fifties, being surrounded by twenty somethings. That would. That would have its own set of challenges. I would love it. You would thrive. I would hate it. (laughs) I would love it. I would love every minute of it. They would hate me, but I would love every minute. (laughs) The other thing that happens in this episode is we understand or we find out that Carrie has a podcast. She has the podcast, but she's not, the podcast is new. It's a new experience for her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, we get, which this is what I don't buy. Yeah. That this transition is also weird as well. Like this Mm -hmm. one, it feels like she would have evolved more with the times given what her job was in the nineties and the early two thousands. Right. So also a little hard to buy off on and she's, you know, she's kind of holding back which it's like, you know, that's not the carry that we know. But there's a difference between writing and speaking. There sure is. Yeah. There right. Is. So I can, I can see and feel her pain and understand it 100%. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love the two characters that she's, the, you know, the trio with yes. Che and. I don't oh remember what his name is. I can't remember his name. It's such a funny funny name. We'll have to look it up. Yeah. He's funny. I like him. Uh, so I appreciate this, this trio and the content and where they're trying to go with it Mm -hmm. because it is, it it, it's, it's where our culture is right now. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's Mm -hmm. current. Uh, I love how uncomfortable Carrie is. I mean, it really shows her as being a prude Mm -hmm. and out of touch. A prude with fabulous gloves, though. I have to tell you, when I saw the gloves when she was leaving uh, the podcast recording, mm-hmm. as someone who's been, you know, slowly returning back to the office, I might, I might have to get some fancy sparkly gloves. The gloves. For, she, she says they're her elevator gloves. Yes, mm-hmm. the gloves are so good. So good. Uh, there's a lot that goes on in that scene. Just her inability to really be comfortable. And then I love Che, I automatically love yeah, Che. Big fan. Right out, right out of the gate. And I'll be interested. It's going to be interesting to see that unfold, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yep. I'm here for it. I don't know if she can handle it. <laughs> I hope she can. More will be revealed. More will be revealed. <laughs> uh, the other thing that happens in episode one is that we find out that, um, Nia, that's the professor's name. Is that the professor's name? Has some issues, some challenges with her ability. 
fertility issues, right? Fertility issues. Yeah. And that, yeah. uh, Miranda's trying to get all up in her business and there's just a clash. Yeah. That happens clash. at the subway. They're kind yep. of like this awkward after their awkward classroom experience, they're now having an awkward subway experience. Yeah. Uh, and I think the other thing that's here is that we see big and Carrie having a moment. And th this is what I find interesting. Again, this. Is this when she, she asks him to, you know what, in front of her? Yeah. <laughs> like, really? I can't even <laughs> say it. And it's not, I'm not an uptight person, but like, I was really uncomfortable. I did not want to watch that scene. I was like, please make it stop. <laughs> Well, this is what I find interesting is that she's, you know, in this trio doing the podcast and it's a sexually charged podcast. And then she goes yep. home to big asking him to masturbate. And he's like, Hey baby. Right. <laughs> it's so weird. And then the foreshadowing is there yes. because she, she, she mentions his nitroglycerin, which as someone who has a heart condition and mm -hmm. has I have my own prescription of nitroglycerin. I actually have little pill bottles in various different places. Uh -huh. I'm alerted to, aha, there's, yep. you know, we know the heart condition is still uh, okay. at the forefront of Big's character. So still there's some there. foreshadowing is coming. Didn't, didn't realize at the time how quickly that storyline would come to a head, but um, we do see that. Uh, I, yeah. That's enough said on that. I just appreciate it. I, because there are a couple that have been together for a while and Carrie is trying to get out of her box, right? She's trying to grow. And I know that it was probably uncomfortable for her to ask that question, but she's trying. Was it though? I don't know. Yeah, I think so. Okay. All right. So then there's the recital which Charlotte, oh, God, yes. okay, let's remember that Charlotte basically badgered Carrie into going, like guilt tripped her into going because Carrie didn't really want to go. She wanted yep. to go out of town with Big and then yep. had to rearrange their travel plans just to make her friend happy, which we've all been in that situation. Um, we've all been in that situation. And quite honestly, we've probably all been Charlotte too, if we've had kids. Like I, I, I get both sides in this case. Um, and so Carrie has rearranged her plans, but Big is definitely not interested in going to the recital because he's going to stay home with his Peloton. Alexa. <laughs> <laughs> or no, it's Allegra. Allegra. Yes. <laughs> Which when I hear that, what's, it reminds me, it reminds me of a prescription. It reminds me of a porn star. Oh yeah. I can see I'm that thinking too. that he's getting on the Peloton and there's going to be a porn star in front of him. And like, he's chasing her. I don't know why I think that way, but this is what I'm thinking. Well, I mean, in his eyes, she probably was a porn star. Like, you know, he was, Maybe. I'm sure he was visualizing, fantasizing about her. Yes, probably. Like, I think that happens. Uh, when we're back at the recital, you know, we are seeing everybody outside front and, and there's Steve Miranda's lovely Steve, who is partner. apparently everybody else is in their mid fifties. Apparently Steve is now 800. <laughs> what happened to him? What happened to Steve? <laughs> he suddenly can't hear. He's like limping. He can't, like... I do not understand why, why have <laughs> they done that? Poor Steve. Yeah. And okay. So side note here, I'm just going to mention Miranda's hair looks halfway decent in this scene. I, I know that the, that we're going to be talking about her hair a lot because you're I right. Can't. The, it, it changes from episode to episode yeah. and there's a lot of bad hair in there. It's a lot of, and bad it's hair, not like... because of the, it's not just because of the color. No, it's, it's the just... way it's styled. I don't, there's, there's some things. Yeah. Like, come okay. on. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think, you know, so we're inside, uh, we see LTW. Is that her name? <laughs> Yes. With her husband, with her husband. Uh, and then once again, we see, uh, Miranda with the hooch. Hey, everybody. Yeah, I have the wine full bottle in her bag and, and little white cups for everybody. A full bottle. She brought the cups. 
That is like, is there, what else is in there? Is there like a pic? Do you have a charcuterie board? What else is in there? Like she planned or she grabbed something on the, she, there was planning involved. She did not want to be in that situation without her bottle. That's intentional. Yeah. 100%. You know who, you know, yeah. I I mean, I was intentional. Yeah. I I went out. I took a fifth of vodka into the movie theater Hello. consistently. Yes. By the time I would leave the movies, I would be smashed. One time I even remember the empty bottle falling out of my handbag and the theater we were in was, you know, angled and we heard it rolling all the way to the front yes. as did everyone else. Awkward. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. So, so when this, when she pulls this out, I'm confirmed that she is definitely having a midlife crisis and that alcoholism or addiction is coming down the path for us. That's what I think. Alcohol use disorder. A-U-D, correct. Uh, So we go into the recital and Lily is fabulous and everybody's having this beautiful moment. As is her dress and just a little note on the outfit of Rose, Lily and Charlotte. Of course, Charlotte has them all matching. I think it's Oscar de la Renta. And I love that Rose is like, pulls on some weird tuxedo penguin t-shirt, right. penguin hat situation. Cause you know, she's at, she's at that age where she's trying to really push against Charlotte. She's mm-hmm. the child that's going to push against the mom mm-hmm. versus Lily is like kind of the perfect, you know, the she's perfect, sweet. she's perfect, perfect and sweet. Um, so I like that we have that going on. So, so the scene is playing out where she's playing this incredible piece and we're looking at everybody in the audience, but then we keep flashing back to big at home with Allegra and he keep and he's getting, he's getting pretty worked up. He gets very worked up mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then it happens. And just like that. And just like that. So how do we feel about the scene? I'm torn. I felt, here's what I felt. I felt like it was fairly realistic. In my mind, I think they tried to play it. I think he tried, he knew he was going to go. He knew this was it. And he was just waiting for her to get home to see her one more time. Yeah. Um, I get her shock at seeing him and like, not expecting what she sees and not quite understanding and she freezes i think that's that would be a very normal reaction a lot of people on the internet were like why didn't she do anything Meh. and it's like give her how i'm like th- th- this was a very short period of time um you know the symbolism of getting into this sh- like trying to help him and then the wedding shoes the blue shoes getting all wet like well done well crafted um no you don't like you do, you, okay i know i know we can agree to disagree yeah, this is no, why we work this i we work. i was sadly disappointed because i wanted to see their relationship evolve past the perfection that's what i wanted to see and they took him out of the loop too soon so this moment that they had prior to her leaving for the concert, you know, he's smoking his cigar and she's saying, bye, there's no hugging. There's no kissing. Look, I've been married now. Tw- I've been with my partner 12, 15 years. I still give him a kiss. Goodbye. Like I leave the house. I say goodbye. And I give him a kiss. Like, th- and everybody's in a different place in their relationship. I get that. But they painted us a picture that they were so in love. And then suddenly she's just like, bye, like nothing. There was no, no connection there. And then we cut to him, you know, with Allegra (laughs) and having that moment and she walks in and he's on the floor. It's, I would have been all over him screaming because of the intimacy that they portrayed between them. So for me, that scene felt disconnected, like there was a disconnect. And I just think for my own, like my own personal, if that was my husband, I would be on the ground, like, like 
I got to do something, everything. I'd be shoving the pills down his mouth. I don't know. Like, I, I don't know. You would, never, you would go into solution mode. Yeah. I would go yeah. into solution mode because yeah, I get that. I am so like, again, this is my heart, right? Like we just see that he, I mean, she, last night she said, will you masturbate for me? Like, right. There's this, like, this great love affair between the two of them. And she to- just freezes up. She just like, what, what do I do? So I don't know. That's, I was kind of disappointed with this scene. You know, what's interesting though, now that it's been a little bit is (laughs) what would have happened if he hadn't died in episode one, because you know, there, there's a lot of things happening on the internet now about that, about that actor. Right. And, and, you know, I think I even read an article this morning saying that season two of, and just like that may not get picked up because (gasps) of him. No. Yes. Which he's not even a part of it now. I know, but you know, so uh, it just brings up a lot of other questions. Yes. I'm not sure what's going to happen next, but I think episode one, uh, was a great start. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm, I'm a big fan. I'm a good, I'm a big fan because they're showing, uh, topics that are hard to talk about. Uh, that women are not talking about in this demographic because we're so isolated right now. And it's a great way for us to create community and have these discussions. So I'm grateful for the mindful bitch. It's about friendship. It's still at its core. What the show has always been about is friendship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how how they they move through it and how are they going to move through it? So I'm excited to talk about episode two because we watched those back to back. So yes. I, guess, I guess we'll do that on the next episode. Next episode, episode two. If you haven't watched it, watch it. Binge mindfully. Until next time.